Last year, I recommissioned this 3DFX Voodoo 1. I wanted to experience the change from software render to the 3DFX Glide hardware render. But apart from the visual improvements, I was curious how a 3D add-on card could breathe new life into a dated PC from the mid-90s. You can watch that video here. Today I'm going to continue where I left off and see if it would have made more sense to buy a better CPU or to upgrade to the Voodoo 2. For this experiment, I will be using an AMD K62+, Plus, a Voodoo 1 and a Voodoo 2. First, the Voodoo 1 will be paired with the AMD K6 at 200MHz. Then I will run the same benchmark, but this time with the CPU clocked at 400MHz. After that, I will replace the Voodoo 1 with a Voodoo 2 and repeat the same tests. The Voodoo cards will be paired with the 8MB Matrox Millennium 2. There will also be 128MB of system memory with the tightest timings I could set in the BIOS. The ESS Audio Drive 1688 will be the sound card. All those components will be working together on the ASUS P55, T2, P4 and Windows 98 Second Edition as the operating system. Now we can start to look at the first couple of tests with the Voodoo 1, a 4MB 3D accelerator card. Windows 98 SE is equipped with a suitable driver for the Voodoo 1. Unreal's Time Demo at 512x384 with high texture details will be the benchmark for all tests. Now we can run the first benchmark with the Voodoo 1 and the AMD K62 Plus clocked at 200MHz. Twenty-one frames per second is the result for the two hundred megahertz CPU paired with the Voodoo One. Now we run the same tests, but this time the CPU will be clocked at four hundred megahertz. This time, we almost got 29 frames per second. Now it's time to move on to the Voodoo 2. Windows 98 SE does not come with a driver for this card. Therefore, I downloaded the reference drivers 30202. The AMD CPU is now clocked at 200MHz again, but this time the Voodoo 2 took the place of the Voodoo 1. <laughs> 
we get just short of 24 frames per second. This is a lower score than in the previous benchmark. So let's run the benchmark again with a CPU clocked at 400 MHz. Now we get almost 39 frames per second. Now we can have a look at the benchmark results. I tested Unreal in two different patch versions. First, I started with the latest official patch 226, but the minimum frame rates in this version were lower than I expected based on previous benchmark results. If you look at the results between the two versions, you will notice that patch 225 works better with the Voodoo cards, especially when comparing the minimum frame rates. For the rest of this video, I will focus on the results of patch 225. At the beginning of this video, I wanted to answer the question if it would have been better to upgrade your CPU or replace the Voodoo 1 with a Voodoo 2. If you kept your Voodoo 1 and upgrade the CPU, you would see a nice performance gain. The Voodoo 1 performance increases by around 35% when the AMD CPU is clocked at 400 MHz. The 8 extra frames won't get you into a consistent 30 frames per second but it makes the game definitely more playable. So what if instead you would replace the Voodoo 1 with the Voodoo 2? And here's the bad news. You would see a performance increase, but only by 12%. That translates to around 3 to 4 extra frames. That is half the increase we have seen when doubling the CPU speed from 200 to 400 MHz. If you have a Voodoo 2 and a 200 MHz CPU, upgrading the CPU will get you an impressive 62% improvement. This is the largest gain I have measured during all the benchmarks. And finally, if you already had a 400 MHz CPU and upgraded from a Voodoo 1 to a Voodoo 2, the performance would increase by around 33%. It is very clear that the CPU is the bottleneck. The Voodoo 1 performs much better with a higher clocked CPU. Replacing a Voodoo 1 with a Voodoo 2 while remaining with a low clocked CPU results in almost no noticeable improvements. If your system had a 200 MHz CPU and a Voodoo 1, and you could only upgrade one of both, it would have been a much better investment to upgrade the CPU. Now here is one more chart with all the numbers, including maximum frame rates and patch versions. I hope you enjoyed this comparison and have a look at my other videos. There is an entire series about the Asus P55 T2 P4 motherboard.